Okay, so we're going to use GeoGebra real quick. We're going to take a look closely at a regular polygon. And I'll make it a hexagon. That really could be any polygon that we're going to look at here. I'm going to inscribe it using this circle through three points technique. And maybe I'll make it just a little bit bigger so we can kind of look at it closely. Now, what I want to do is I want to consider the center of this polygon. So let's find that center. We know that the center is going to be found somewhere between these opposite vertices and the best and easiest way to find it, I find it by finding the point where they all meet. So now I have an intersection point here. I'm trying to find the intersection right there which now takes my regular polygon and divides it into triangles. Hey this is handy triangles here um, and we're going to consider like in this case today we're going to consider the perimeter of this this you know circle how do we find the circumference of a circle and we're going to consider it as we think about um, you know this regular polygon in this case it's a hexagon let's take a look real quick while we're at it let's just find a regular polygon with a few more sides let's say that we're going to. Let me start that again. A regular polygon with a few more sides. Hmm. <laughs> I lost the tool. Here we go. Let's say we have a polygon and let's say let's give it, oh, let's give it 40 sides. Notice what happens is you have a lot of sides. It starts to approach a circle. And if you have a ton, ton, ton more sides, it'd be much more like a circle. So there's a relationship between, you know, this, this regular polygon in here and the circle. Okay? The more sides that we add, the closer it becomes to a circle. And if you added enough sides, we'd say, hey, it, it, really, that's another definition some geometry classes might teach. Really, in college geometry, they'll teach you that another definition for a circle is it's a regular polygon with infinite sides, infinite sides. So anyway, um, just, just recognizing the relationship here. So if we can find you know, a formula to help us derive the perimeter of any regular polygon, we can then think about how that becomes the formula for the circumference of a circle. So let's, let's find a couple other things that are going to be interesting to us here. We're going to need the midpoint here. So that's the midpoint of this side. And we're going to use this technique that's called the triangle dissection technique. So we're going to consider these triangles that are formed. So right now I'm going to make a couple more triangles real quick. I'm going to make this triangle right here because we really need to consider that one. And um, I'm going to make a copy of it copy of not the entire thing but just of that triangle so I'm gonna bring it over here we're really gonna really really analyze for us to find the perimeter of this whole thing we're gonna start by thinking about just the the value here of this point now this point's gonna be from C to B down here okay C2 to B2 we're just gonna consider that value there so let's let's do a little bit of um, math right here and think about how we're going to find the area or the, the length of this side right here. Now this is a right triangle as we dropped this um, from this midpoint this would be a right triangle. I can prove that because I know that these sides are all congruent. Okay so this right here distance from the center to a vertex is going to be the same there so these two sides are the same right and I know this was the midpoint, Z, so this side has to be congruent to that side. And I know this side is congruent to itself, so this triangle here is congruent to that triangle there. And if they're congruent, then these angles must be right angles. Because this right here is a l linear pair. They equal 180, and they're equal to each other, so they each have to equal half. So in any event, this is a right triangle. So what does it mean that it's a right triangle? Well, we can figure out a lot of things. Let's figure out what would the angle right here be, this angle of angle A right here. Well, the angle of angle A, the measure of angle A, so measure of, of angle A is equal to, what would we do? We take 360, right? There's 360 degrees, 
and we would divide it by the number of sides. So we'll use n, you know, where, and we'll just say, where n is equal to the number of sides. Uh, but actually, we, we have two triangles for each side, so we're going to divide it by 2n, okay? Because there are two triangles for each side, so the measure of this one angle, angle A, is going to be half of the full measure there, so it's equal to 360 divided by 2n, or another way to write it is that we could say that the measure of angle A is equal to 180 over N. Okay, so we're going to use that information here in a moment. Um, another thing we're going to think about, um, we're going to think about uh, how we could find um, the sine of that angle up here, that angle A. So the sine of this angle, so let's write this out, sine of angle A sine of A is equal to the opposite. Now if I call this side over here X, so I'm going to put opposite over the hypotenuse, right? Which in this case, this hypotenuse we can think of as the radius because it goes from the center to the vertex. So we could say it's equal to X, our unknown value, which is side BC down here, this side. We don't know what that is. Divided by the um, radius, right? Okay, and that is what we know this to be, okay? It is the, uh, the sine of angle A is equal to X over this radius here. Okay, the next thing that we're going to do is, um, you know, if I were to solve for X, so I want to know what X is, I'm going to multiply both sides times the radius. So x, that side here, is going to be equal to the radius times the sine of angle A. So does that make sense? I said the sine of angle A is equal to this divided by the radius. So to solve, I multiply both sides by the radius, okay? All right, let's, let's let that sit there and just see it for a moment. So we know that this is one definition for the length here. It's equal to the radius times the sine of angle A. Now, what did we say that angle A was equal to? It was equal to 180 over N. So let's put some more text in here. So we could now say that X is equal to the radius times the sine of 180 over N. Okay, and all we're doing is we're saying, hey, we measured angle A, it was 180 over N. So we substitute that in here, instead of saying the sine of A, we're saying it's the sine of 180 over N. So now, <clears throat> the full length of um, this side, side A, B there, is equal to twice the length of this little X here, right? So that full length is because what we have here is we have, um, you know, the full length here being two times as long as x. So the 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 whole perimeter. If we were going to go around the perimeter and define that, it would be two times this x value times however many triangles we have, which we said we'd use n is the number of sides. So it's going to be equal to 2 times n times that x. Whatever we get here, we've got to double it, and then we've got to take that length and multiply it by however number sides. So that's what this says right here. So that's how we're going to find our perimeter here. Now, what are we going to do? We're going to substitute in the value of x that we calculated earlier, which the value of x is equal to the radius times the sine of 180 over n. So here we go. We could say our perimeter is equal to 2 times um, n times, instead of putting in x, now I'm going to put in radius times the sine of 180 over n. Radius times 
times sine of 180 over n. Okay, so now we're getting to the point where we basically, you know, are getting to where we have a calculation. I'm going to put OK here and um, pause for just a second. Okay, so we've got to this point here. So what I wanted to do was build up my, um, you know, use my calculator to show you something here. So, but the key is that we've got 2 times n times the radius times sine of 180n. So here we go. I'm going to write that down here. So the perimeter, oh boy, let me zoom out. Sorry, I should have had this a little more ready. Now here we go. So the perimeter is equal to 2 times n times the radius times one, the sine of 180 over n. And now I'm just going to rewrite this. I'm going to put 2 times r times n times the sine of 180 over n. So I'm just switching the r and the n. It's all multiplication. So, oh boy. So you should be able to see that all I've done is switch these around. Now we're going to look really closely at this part right here. What is n times the sine of 180 over n? I want you to look at my calculator. So what I've done here is I've put in n times the sine of 180 over n. And I've defined this column as n. Okay, so if it's a, a one-sided polygon, n would be equal to n would be equal to 1. What would that value be? Well, it just says zero. There would be no side length. That makes sense. What about two? Of course, you can't have a two-sided thing, but let's go out to the triangles. As we start adding in sides, I want you to notice what's going to happen. We're getting bigger, but now it's not getting bigger by much. Nine, ten, oops, that was one, ten. All right, what if I go up to 20, All right? What if I go to... 40 and 50. What if I go to 500? Notice it's starting to not change very much. What about 5,000 and 50,000? So I want you to notice what happens. What happens is this number here, okay, this value barely changes from one number to the next, okay? And that's because if I go out here, 500. Zero, zero, Let's go 500 million. So 500, that's the millions. There's the thousands. And there's some more. And we can see that this is approaching a number that we call pi. And this is pi. So as you add in a whole bunch of sides, eventually this is equal to pi. So this right here, all of this, as we change the shape from a polygon into a circle, we have 2 times r times pi. Well, guess what? It's no longer called the perimeter. Now it's called the circumference. So the circumference of a circle, a lot of algebra involved here, but the circumference is equal to 2 pi r. That's our formula for the circumference of a circle. Let's go back through that one more time, just kind of look at how we got there, because you're going to need to do this, okay? So what we said is, Let's take a look at inside of our polygon at the triangle. Let's think about this side here. Now we said that the measure of this angle here was going to be 360 degrees because that's how many degrees are in a circle. We divide it by the number of, of triangles, number of sides, which tells us how many triangles there are. And then we divide that in half because we're going to have two triangles there. So the measure of this angle here, A, is equal to 180 over N. And its sine is going to be equal to this value here, which we might call x, right? So this could be x right here. That's this length here over the hypotenuse, which is our radius, right? That's the radius from the center to the vertex, okay? So x, if we solve for that, we would say that x is equal to the radius times the sine of 180 over n, the sine of a, which is 180 over n. Now, our regular definition of this perimeter should be equal to 2 times x, that'd be one side, times the number of sides that we have. So 2 times x times n, the number of sides. And then we just substitute for x. Instead of saying x, we say the radius times the sine of 180 over n. That's all the algebra you really need to do.